Welcome to a well-designed business with your host, Luan Nigara. Luann has a lifetime of experience building a multi-million dollar business with her husband and cousin, and she knows the challenges you face in your interior design business. Luann brings you real-life answers to your most pressing problems, as well as practical strategies to explode your interior design business. So, let's get to the business of interior design. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Power Talk Friday on a well-designed business. I have Kay Whitaker in the house. Woo, woo, woo. Hey, hey Kay. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I just smile when I see you in my calendar. That's how I am at this point. I hope everybody smiles it when they see it in the queue in iTunes. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so, yes. That is it. So, all right. Now, you know, if you are unfamiliar with who Kay Whitaker is and why I am so ridiculously happy to have her back on the show, let me just tell you a little bit about Kay. Kay is the owner and the CEO of Kay Whitaker Solutions. She has over 10 years experience in retail and marketing development, and she focuses on helping small businesses stay competitive in their market and surpass their revenue goals. Kay has helped some of the nation's largest retailers, and she's now taken her expertise in retail sales and marketing development to create premium coaching programs that help small business owners tune into what matters most in their marketing efforts to streamline their processes and maximize their clientele. Now, I have to tell you, Kay, if you are new to the show, Kay has been on the show episode 26 66, 114, and most recently, episode 259. Couple things I want to just say in there before we get started, Kay. First <laughs> of all is that last time when you were on the show, 259, I forgot to mention how like the a turn of events that happened with us that I wanted to just share for newer listeners because, you know, not everybody goes back and starts at 1K and listens to right. them all, right? Like, <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> Wait a minute. But they, but they don't. And so um, you were on the show. I found you through Googling best women business coaches, best women entrepreneurs. This is how I found you originally. And I wow. reached out. Yeah. I reached out and asked you to be on the show and you said yes. And on that very first episode that you were on, probably the 26th, number 26th episode, you told us how you had worked with an interior designer in coaching her one-on-one -on -one for her business. And you right. said all of these milestones, all these achievements that this designer had reached. And I was like, whoa, that's amazing. And I said, so how long were you working with her to help her achieve those goals? And you're like, three months. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, what? Not like 10 years? You know what I'm saying? Like, and so then what did I say when we hung up the, the Skype call? I was like, now I need to interview that interior designer. Yeah. <laughs> and so then I had Farah Hyman on, and Farah was the girl, the woman that you in, uh, interviewed. And I've since met Farah, and so it's and I've met you. You came to my birthday party yes. for the podcast birthday party last year, and Farah and I met. I want to say in Las Vegas, but it, oh I my think god, the market. Yep, right. And so mm -hmm. anyway, so it was a very. Um, insightful episode for me because like I said I found you by your reputation online and then when wow. I met you and spoke to you uh, it was completely confirmed and then that story was so good and then meeting Farah was so good too so I really have to if you if this is the first time you're meeting Kay Whitaker that's a great show to get an understanding of what happened and then to follow up with the episode with Farah so um, and you think that I would have looked up that episode before I got got on the line with you but let me see if I can multitask here find it real quick <laughs> but anyway while I'm trying to do that I just want to say to everybody a couple of weeks ago on Power Talk Friday 259 Kay was on and we started a conversation about email marketing and in that particular episode we took we took apart Kay took apart for us all of the um, steps in an email sequence that would be literally we she literally took apart and made suggestions for the type of content that you would do in a five to a seven email sequence particularly targeted at an interior design firm and so it's a very actionable episode you need a pen and paper I'm just warning 
recording it all right now. Yep. Don't even bother trying to do it in the car unless you know you're going to be able to sit down <laughs> afterwards and listen again. <laughs> I mean, but I guess it would be a good idea to maybe listen in the car running and then know that you're going to follow up with it the other way. But um, here we go. Farrah was episode 43. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that was a great episode, too. All right. Don't mind me. I'm a little biased on the episodes. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so today we're following up from episode 259, where we talked about this email sequence. And today we're going to talk about um, not the actual content so much, but the types of emails. And Kay was just describing to me that there are emails that are considered broadcast emails and triggered emails. We're going to talk about open rate. We're going to talk about um, sending the wrong kind of emails. And so start us off, Kay. Where do we want to start with this whole scenario and this conversation here? So when we are sending our emails, like there, it's all great to understand your campaigns and how to structure them and how to get the emails set up so that they tell a story. But what's more, even more important is understanding the type of emails that you're going to send and also the categories of emails that exist within those types. Because you can send the wrong email that can turn your readers off, uh, be something that's not interesting to them, and it can absolutely affect the way you show up in their inbox or you get automatically push to that either promotional inbox or that spam box, which nobody checks. So you really want to get into the nitty gritty of, okay, I know I've got this in these series of emails, but what types of emails am I sending? When am I sending them? And who am I sending them to, to make sure that they are effective when they go out? Okay. And are we just, do we need to back up a moment and say that, you must obviously you have to have some sort of email list already. I mean, we're not talking about going out and having bought email lists and starting there, are we? Or that's a whole different conversation. That's a whole different conversation because and if, without going completely over your head, but I can give you an idea of how we kind of work. So you can purchase email lists um, from providers that are specific to the demographic of audience that you want. And I like to use a different technique when I'm emailing them because they're not familiar with me. They haven't opted in through any of my offers. It's very much solicitation driven. So you've got to use a different approach when you're emailing them. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. What we're talking about is the people that have actually opted in voluntarily right. to your list based off of something that you've had to offer publicly online. Okay, so you have um, you have your design firm to the point where maybe you have a lead magnet. You've developed a little Correct. ebook or something that says the top ten, you know, t ten white colors that you can never go wrong with in paint or something, whatever. Correct. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Okay, and then and I know I I'm, I keep cutting you off at the pass here, but before we continue to get into the nitty gritty, um, you know, there are probably designers out there that really maybe the only people on their email list is the 20 clients they've had in the last six years. Is that, that's right. okay, right? I mean, that's what the okay. heck, right? Yeah, we still want to cultivate okay. and reconnect and be with them. So we're not just talking about, hey, if you don't have 2,000 people on an email list, you can you can check out of the show right now. It's, right. Like, it's for no, everybody. No, no. Right. It's for everybody. And here's the deal. The main role of email marketing is moving whoever is on your list, whether they are past clients, existing clients, are people that are just dating your brand right now, it's moving them from becoming aware of who you are to going into a buying transaction, going into another buying transaction, right. and continuously going through this cycle. It's a customer journey, and there's several steps in those journeys, but the whole goal and the whole role of email marketing is to move them into the logical next step of that journey. Okay. Okay, good. Okay. So with that established, now we go back to there are, and, and I just want to say one other thing. I can totally understand that if you have your own email list where that has come from your client base and maybe people who are not clients but have opted into your list like you described from a, a, a magnet or some sort of um, mechanism like that, that that is a warmer lead than Absolutely. what's happening when you buy a list. And so you can't go to a buy list and say, hey, it's 
me again. How you been? Right. <laughs> I have no idea who you are. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Like, whoever, crazy pants, get away from my email list box. <laughs> I don't know you. <laughs> right. So, okay, so good. Takes okay. A little different and, it's, and it's funny, too, because I'm just going to share with you that it does turn you off. I literally just sent and I received another email this morning. And it's so funny because I've ignored the email this email from this particular whoever it is because I can't figure it out um, right. in the last six weeks they've sent this email to window work saying your company has been nominated for this XYZ award please collect you know su- you know click here to accept and to- yeah. here to- and I'm just yeah. like so I've been ignoring it I've been like whatever today they're like you know I've emailed you four times in the last six weeks and I'm like okay now you have my attention get right. off my <laughs> you know what I mean it's like <laughs> wait now I'm in trouble because you've been soliciting me <laughs> like what <laughs> so yes. yeah there are wrong ways to do this. it right (laughs) i'll say this for anybody that is purchasing leads because you can it's nothing wrong with it if that's your business model and that's the way you approach getting new business then that's fine but you want a different system so yeah you want something like a salesforce that when you get those contact addresses that they can find those people on social media they can go and find those people in other places so that you can connect with them elsewhere elsewhere outside of just their email inbox to start to build a relationship with them that is real deal sales you need a sales team in place that can help you kind of maneuver through those leads right so okay so to make the record straight we're not talking about that we're talking about our warm Uh, leads uh, okay (laughs) okay now we can continue with the show yes (laughs) (laughs) all right so 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 to kind of go back to your point I want to kind of drill in on that just a little bit, just so people are clear. So there may be some designers that the only people they have on their list are current clients or some people that have opted into their list. Maybe there's 20 people on the books that have actually paid them for a service before, and there might be a hundred or so on their list that have actually opted in for something of interest. You're not going to send those groups of people the same content in your email marketing. Okay. Another great point. Right. They're not at the same point in the customer journey. Okay. So you're going to approach them differently with different types of content, different types of campaigns to move them to the next step. They're not going to the same step. So you can't treat them the same. The relationship is different. Right. Again, you don't want to have the person that has already been your client and purchased from you. You're not, you're, you're, you know, that's different. It's, hey, you love me, you like me, we work business together. What are we going to do next? The other is, right. hey, you're still trying me on. What do you think, right? What do you think? How okay. can I help? Is there anything else that I can do? Those special offers that come up when you're trying to invoke a click in your email, you're not going to send that. It's like almost like asking your wife to marry you again. It just doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> Right. I'm a like, sure thing, no. buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Done that. I walked down the aisle. I love you. You know, there's no need for us to go down that road again. So you kind of want to think of your email list like that. <laughs> Oh, my God. I hope everybody thinks we're half as funny as we think we are. I just laugh every time you come on the show. I love you. <laughs> okay. All right. So so now are we – what are we going to do? So one is broadcast and one is triggered? Is that where – Yes. Okay, good. Okay. So you've got two types of email. You've got a broadcast email that is sent out to everybody on your list. And those types of emails, we'll kind of get into the types of emails I broadcast in just a second. And then you've got a triggered email, which is the types of emails that you're going to send more often than just the broadcast. And the triggered emails are those emails that are specific to a particular group of people that are on your list, depending where they are in the journey. Okay. All right. So, so for an example, so for a broadcast email, like your newsletter, like Luann, you send out a weekly update of what's going on on the podcast that's going out to everybody. Right. Because everybody's going to benefit from that. But there may be a promotion that you're getting ready to run, like for your masterminds that are getting ready to come up that might be specific to a group of people on your list that you want to send to that group only. And the way that you would do that is you would send out what's called a segmentation campaign. And the whole goal of this campaign is to pique the interest of the people that are on your list. And based off of their activity, it tells you if they're interested. So then you can move them into a campaign that's promotional leading up to the sales of your mastermind. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I like it. All right. Good. 
All right. So what you're saying is, is that you may have a big list and, it, and the big list might be like you alluded to, 100 people, but 20 have been paid clients. So for all 120, you're going to send out announcements. Hey, I was at High Point. This is what I learned right. and blah, blah, blah. And But for the 100 that have never purchased or done business with you, you might say, what, I'm, I'm running a gift certificate special for the holidays or something? Right. Okay. So what you want to do is find out if what you have to offer is of interest. So the first email that you're going to send out or the first series of emails that you're going to send out, because it takes a couple of emails to get everybody that's interested to raise their hand. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you're going to do is say, hey, you know what? Whatever the subject matter of your mastermind is, that's going to be the subject of your email. So if it is business development or whatever that is, how does this sound and send out an email and get them to click to go somewhere to learn about it. So maybe there's a blog post that you've written that is directly related to the the sale that you're trying to make and you get them to go to the blog post. If I click through to the blog post, I'm telling you that I'm interested. So I move to another segment on your list and we tag them is what we call it, tags. So I might tag them mastermind interest. Okay. Okay. And after a series of like three emails, everybody that's received the tag of mastermind interest goes into what I like to call um, an an ascension campaign, which is just moving them. It's just saying, okay, they're here, they're segmented, they've shown interest. Now it's time to ascend them to the next step, which is going into a buying transaction, which is the sales of my mastermind. So now this ascension campaign is promotional. Okay. I'm I'm already overwhelmed, I'm just gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it's the techie stuff. It's it my brain is already like, Really? Then that, then this and I'm like, Are there little robots that do all this? Because if I have to yes. do this, I'm like, I'm this done. Is all automated. Okay. This is all automated. That part the- is very good. Okay. Yes. Good. <laughs> the hardest part that you're going to have to do is storyboard these emails in advance, okay. set them up to go out at a particular time, create your tags and your actions. Once you do that and you start this process, the automation kicks in. And if you know you're sending three emails this week and seven over the course of the next two weeks, then you know in three weeks you should expect revenue. Mm-hmm for what it is that you're trying to sell. Okay. So it sounds like something that's a, a, a quite a bit of work and the upfront, but once you mm-hmm. put that effort in, then it becomes something that just can keep repeating itself forever and over ever and, and ever. Over yeah. and over and over. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now tell me specifically for interior designers, what would be the example of that triggered email to the warmer, you know, list that we, you know, what get like, so we use the example of masterminds, but let's use an example for interior designers. Okay. So let's say you've got a person that's on your list that hadn't done like the full home. They started with one room, maybe they started in the kitchen, but you know, the need is to get their whole home done at some point, but they haven't quite committed to the rest of those renovations. They're going piece by piece, you know, it's those one-off rooms. So maybe once they are done with the kitchen process, they go into like a follow-up series that acts for testimonials. You know, we talk about that all the time on the show, making Mm -hmm. sure that you're getting your feedback and then starting them into the process of starting to think about their next room. So maybe the email is not in the same month. It's not in the same two months, but three months later, the next quarter, you're like, okay, they should be ready to move into the next phase of their home. Okay. So now you send out something that's specific to bathrooms, 10 steps on starting the bathroom redesign, whatever, just to kind of get their thought process going. Okay. And if they engage, if they open, they click, they send a reply, then you know they're interested and you can start a sales conversation with them about the next part of their design series. Okay. And I, now this is where like I get going down rabbit holes and people that know me look at me and go, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> but I do have a question. <laughs> okay. So, so do you have to and should you 
really further separate that? So for instance, I like the example, you've done a one-off room for a client. In the process of doing that one-off room, you and the client have discussed how in the future they want to do the bathroom, they want to do the master bedroom, they want to do the kids' bedrooms, whatever it might be. Do you, K need to and should you have a, a trigger email series that starts with each of those types of projects so mrs smith gets the bathroom blog post mm-hmm. and email and mr jones gets the master bedroom blog post email yes wow wow yes so wow. that's how it all because email because otherwise it's a broadcast email is what you're saying elsewise it's broadcast uh-huh So this is how blogging and that content on your blog starts to be purposeful Mm. because your blog is a resource. Right. So if you know that at any point in time, you're going to design a full home, you've got a category on your blog that may not be public. It might be unlisted so that the only time someone sees it is when you send them to it. But maybe there's blog posts there that are targeted towards the full home or targeted towards the specific rooms in the home Mm. so that when people are ready to go into those those pieces of the process you can send them to that category they can consume information based off of what they do on your website you know they're interested and then you can start the email sequence that has already been set up you set it up at the beginning of the year and based off of timing and triggers you can send this stuff out on automation while you're still growing your business on the front end wow it's it's i i love it because it's Here's the thing. For a busy interior design firm that has a relatively full pipeline to think about, you know, laying this out and yeah, and, and like figuring out who goes into what, you know, email sequence and making the storyboards for each of this email sequence. It can sa- it can feel overwhelming, but the value is there and maybe if you're busy enough, but you know you could be busy or maybe you pay somebody to to kind of work right. this through for you, right? But if you're not busy, Right. If you're sitting there and you're looking at quarter one and maybe you have zero or one or two projects as time consuming as this is, it just seems to me block off two weeks and do it. Right. Right. Like make your storyboards, figure it out, get it. You know, I I mean, me, I would have to have somebody like you or somebody help me actually do the tech part of it. But there's designers that are capable of it. Right. I mean, Mm -hmm. there's there's. Yeah. I mean, so that's the other thing. So if you are inclined because of time and um, money and ability to actually do it yourself is it it's part of like your eye contact or your a weber is that what right. it is okay it's that's exactly what it is when you're looking at your email pro, your email service providers the ones that you are using to send out the emails you want to look for automation Okay. capabilities okay. tagging capabilities okay um so that you can separate your list Okay. Um, Automation and, and, and tagging capabilities. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 And most of them come with it. Most of them come with it. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, so where do we go from there on, on this discussion? Kay? do we go for, um, do we talk about, um, the open rates? Do we need to have a conversation about that or that we're not yes. there yet? Where are we now? Well, no, we need to talk about the open rates and the reason why segmenting is so important Because as I said before, you can send the wrong email to the wrong person and they don't open it. And here's the deal. So let's use the example of we're sending sales emails to customers that have already purchased. They're not going to open those emails, not because they don't like you, but because they don't need what it is that you're sending them. Mm. So they won't participate in that conversation. And your goal as an email marketing is to get as much engagement around your emails as possible So you can ensure your emails end up in the inbox. So you don't want to send the wrong email to the wrong group of uh, recipients because if they don't open it, it looks negatively to service providers like Google and Yahoo and AOL. I'll tell you what, the Googly makes me crazy. (laughs) (laughs) It seems like all day long. It's like this this boyfriend that can't be satisfied. Right. We're just always trying to make it right for the Google. <laughs> Who put him in charge of everything? Well, here's the deal. 
real. So Google, because they want as many people using their services, they have to ensure that <laughs> their users are having a good experience. Yeah, yeah. So if people are leaving their platform because they're getting spammed and all that, you know, so yeah, it's yeah. a double edged sword. You know, yeah, we yeah. have to play the game. Now, if we understand this stuff on the front end, then we automatically please Google. But if we don't, then we're taking them off. And they're putting us in places where we can't be seen. Right. Okay. Okay. So my distaste for the Googly <laughs> notwithstanding, <laughs> no. I hear what you're saying. What you're saying is that it's just like any other parent figure. It's Correct. there in our life for a good reason. As right. the recipient, we don't want things that are not appropriate to us. And we rely on Google and other things to filter out the things that never should have made it to our email to begin with is what you're saying. Right. Okay. So if you're sending out emails that are consistently not opened and the open rates are, are ridiculously low or low beyond whatever their standards are, then the Google will start to send that to the spam folder as opposed to their inbox. Is that correct? Right. You then become victim to the spam monster mm -hmm. and you wind up in spam and then it's impossible then you have to go through cleaning your list and paying money to run your list through filters to see if these are legitimate email and then having to do re-engagement campaign. It's just a pain in the butt. Yeah. So the okay. best way to combat that is to do as much as you can on the front end. And let me say this, you'll never get a hundred percent open rate. That's right. just not the way it is. You know, I mean, a very low percentage is a good rate, right? I mean, right. 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 What are we right. looking so for? So right now, industry standard for designers is anywhere between 12 to 15% open rate. Wow. Okay. And that's just the reality of the, the beast. Yeah. So, you know, your job is to grow a big list. But once you have that list, making sure you're monetizing it by having these systems in place, because your email list, just like anything else, just like social media, your engagement is only around 16%. It, it all is like that. But email is the place where people feel comfortable making transactions. Mm. Um, and that's what you want to keep in mind. It's the place where the majority of the online transactions will happen. Okay. Okay. And so this is not a show about how to get people on your email list necessarily, but the point is that some of the biggest things are a keep track of every single inquiry that comes into your design firm, whether they convert to being a client or not, but then right. also, you know, through your, uh, social media and so forth like that, your Facebook, your Instagram to be offering things like the holiday guide and the decorating right. tips and stuff like that. And that's how you slowly, but surely build the email list. And the thing that I always like to say to interior designers is, is, you know, if you really do only have an email list of 70, 60, 50 people, how many do you actually need to be a client to make it worthwhile? Right. <laughs> like it's like your right. average ticket sale for interior <laughs> design. It's not like three, three bucks. So if once a quarter somebody was a 10 or 20 or $30,000 client, it's sort of worth right. it. Right. <laughs> it's worth it. I tell people that all the time. You might have 100 people on your list, but can you service all 100 of them at right. one time? Right. God forbid they all called you at the same time. Right. Right. Like in then a coma. you're running for the hills, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, all right, cool. All right, so so the key to pleasing the googly man is that your list, your your titles are targeted. So you started to say how your existing client base will not necessarily open an email from you, even though they like you. And is that because if maybe the title isn't good or Correct. what were you going to say there? Correct. So if you're selling a percentage off of a service that they've already taken advantage of, there's no need for me to open that email if you're sending me a 70% off coupon off of a consultation that I bought from you three months ago. And and if I paid 100% for it, now I'm kind of soft. Yeah. <laughs> There's that. <laughs> There's that. <laughs> okay. So, so, cool. so that's why you're t the segmenting is very important. Yes. And if you, whether you have a hundred or you have a thousand, you want to, the, the people who have done say just that two hour consultation, but then took your information and decided to execute on their own. And you might want to entice them to possibly have another, you know, ha to go further with you. They're going to get a different email subject mm -hmm. and content than somebody who did a full room 
because Absolutely. okay so it's it's a lot it's important but it's a it's lot it's important it's important it's a lot it is but it's so worth it and especially when most of your projects like interior design i'm so jealous most of the time cuz i'm like god you book one contract you got a $30,000 contract <laughs> <laughs> right. The payoff can be nice. Yes. Right. So, yes. And we've said this before on the show, you know, the more you invest, whether it's time or money, the longer it's going to take you to get your return on investment back. But when it returns, the return is so worth it that you are almost like, OK, I'll do this again anytime right. to achieve these type of results. Right, 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 right. OK. And then um, so let me ask you something, Kate. What is the process look like if somebody is listening and they're like, OK, this all sounds amazing, but I don't have the slightest desire to literally map this out myself and is it the kind of thing now of course I know they can hire you I don't mean to you know that's the obvious part but my point is what does that engagement look like is it you know three months of side-by-side hand-holding weekly meetings or is it like hey Luann I have a 10-step process you can buy it and I can walk you through it or you could do it yourself like what is because I I actually have no concept of what would that would look like if I wanted to hire you or someone else to do this for me I know you're going to need my input because you're going to Right. need for me to sit down and segment segment my list you're going to need for me to sit down and say well I'm capable of writing a blog post about a bathroom or no XYZ over my head I can't do that so I get that I have to come to the table but am I coming to the table three three hour meetings over two weeks am I coming to the table two hours every week for six months like what is my involvement look like if I were going to work with a consultant to execute this for me So when I'm doing this, uh, this is kind of a 90 day process with a couple meetings afterwards to kind of follow up. And it's more of 12 sessions. So we sit together hour and a half a week to go through this, whether it's with you or whether it's with a member of your team. So depending on how big you are as a firm, if you're having to do it yourself, then you'll be doing the work. If right. not, <laughs> there's other people that you can say, okay, I'll sit in on the first few sessions just so I know what's going on. But after that, this is your baby. Then I train whoever it is that needs to get this done. Okay. Okay. All right. Because I just really have no concept. It seems to me that it would be, and, and I, I that makes what you just said to me makes complete sense. I didn't think it's like, hey, three meetings and we've got this. But mm-hmm. I really didn't know how long it would take to get an effective email marketing campaign up and running. So you're thinking it's basically a three month process with active yep, happening a- every week. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's three months with stuff happening every week, and there's so much that you have to learn. You have to learn how to write your emails. You have to learn how to segment these lists. You have to learn about all of these different campaigns. So there's a lot that you have to learn and Mm -hmm. that you have to set up. So it takes about three months. When we first started doing this, it took us about a good 90 days to get everything set up and then another 90 days to test it. And then once we tested it and had some numbers that we could look at and make adjustments, then that's when we started to see things really take off from an email standpoint. Mm. But we were making money from email just by segmenting and sending (laughs) the campaigns within like 30 to 45 days. Wow. Just by sending the right email to the right group of people. It's not the type of money we're, we're making now. But we we had an exchange of monetary value Mm. within the first 45 days. Okay. And what do you say in the big picture? Say someone is sitting with, you know, 100 people or 40 people on an email list. Is there any... Is there any need, like say you have this and you've never sent a single email to anybody Mm -hmm. on your email list or Mm -hmm. you haven't in such a long time that they don't even remember that you used to do it. Is Mm -hmm. there any like sort of, hey, remember me? I'm Sally Smith and I'm going to start. Okay. Because I didn't know if you just like just get into it and everybody's like, I know you are. Stop. Or like you (laughs) do an announcement. No, if you've not emailed your list in a little while, there are called re-engagement campaigns that you can send out. We've worth the emails just to send out to re-engage your list. Hey, it's been a while since we talked. You know, just wanted to reach out and let you know what's been happening, what you can expect going forward, giving people a chance to opt out. Okay. Uh, And I know that sounds scary, but you don't want people on your list that don't want to be a part of what you're getting ready to do. So give people an out up front. 
because so the, the open out. rate is infected and then the right. googly doesn't like it. So it's Correct. better to get them out if they really aren't going to open. Okay. If they're not going to open. So it's better to get them rip out. Rip the band-aid. Better to rip it. Go ahead and take it off now. That way, because you're going to have to grow. If you've only got 40 people on your list, we need to grow the mm-hmm. list. And mm-hmm. we can teach you how to grow. There's techniques to growing. But you have to grow your list and you don't want to grow people to a list that is not responding. Right. Right, 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 right. Okay. And do you, when you, if this is the first time you're ever marketing to an email list, or if you're long time and you're re-engaging, as you, as you just said, just said, do you do, um, or is there a place for, or do you bother with like the news of what's happening with my firm? I went to high point market and here's what I learned, or is that all like, no, it has to be more actionable and what is it in it for them? You know, you know what I'm no. saying? So depending on who you are and how you got them on the list is depending on how you can handle them. Okay. If you got them on the list based off of something that you gave for free in hopes to moving them to a service, but you just didn't have the system in place, then you want to re-engage them. But if you got them on the list because they subscribe to weekly updates and they wanted to know about your company, then absolutely give them what they ask for. Okay. 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 So that's also a diff. That's a, I get that distinction. If somebody, if you do have a lead magnet, they don't know who you are, but maybe they Googled. And the thing is, this is the other thing about the lead magnets. If you make it things that people Google to learn about, that's how, cause I have had designers say to me, you know, I have a blog. Nobody reads it. If five people read it, not, nobody knows about me. But the point is, we've discussed in other shows. I just had a good show with um, Ashley folks on power talk Friday Mm -hmm. on SEO. And the point is, is that, you know, when you write your blog post, I just had a designer recently in a one-on-one coaching session say, I have a blog and, and, and nobody reads it. I have my family reads it. That's it. And I said, who cares? You know what I mean? Right. If, you know, really, it's it, like I, I, I talk about that darn transom blog post that I wrote two years ago that I still get people <laughs> like it's like the number one driver to our website is this transom blog right. post. And that was totally by accident. That was no intention on my part <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> but the point is that. That's the thing that brings stranger eyeballs to my website. And if I had any sort of engagement and follow up email thing going on after that, like I have the lead magnet, but like, as you just said, my lead magnet stops there. You get the lead magnet, you get on my email list. And then I'm, I just, I've just been collecting email names and haven't done nothing with them on the window work side, on the window work side. I have 3,500 names on the window work side. I haven't done a darn thing with it. Can you imagine that? (laughs) Yep. And that's the, that's the difference. Most people are in that same boat. They give you what you ask for and it stops there. The difference when you're making money with email is the follow-up. Right. Right. It's the truth. It's like, okay, great. I have all these names. Now what? I'm doing a darn thing with it and it's silly. And, and, and so the thing is, and I know, um, Cheryl Janice was on the show way, way, way back in the beginning. And she, I want to say, I can't remember what she started her email list, but I'm going to, I'm going to go out on a limb. We're going to have to listen to her show again to find out, but I really want to go out on a limb and say that she started with an email list of under 40 people and Mm -hmm. she intentionally spoke to them, um, you know, did all of these things that you are describing. And she talked about it in the show and you can hear me in the show. I was like, wait, it's automated. (laughs) It was like the first time I ever heard of it. (laughs) I'm like, oh, wait, it automatically. And she's like, yes, Luann. I'm like, oh, (laughs) yes. So, but, um, you know, she really, and, and now I'm going to tell you, she's written two books and she sells to her email list every single week and yep. she really with intention grew it from a very small thing and so yep. it, it's possible to do um but anyway okay um i can't find it and talk at the same time so we'll have to talk about so oh, here it is number 41 <laughs> episode 41 with cheryl janice and that wasn't necessarily the entire focus of the interview but we did uh she did speak to it and the reason i bring that up you guys is because she really is 
at that time, a solo interior designer mm -hmm. with a, 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 a little firm in a little pond and was creating huge waves and made great strides because she intentionally did just what Kay is describing, segmented her list, talked to her list every day, searched the SEO and the different titles that were responding yep. and so forth and did it with great intention, you know? It's yep. sort of like, you know, just throwing a floor plan together or doing it the right way. One works Absolutely. and the other doesn't, right? Absolutely. And with you being a solo entrepreneur, and you said something, she spoke to her list every day. Yeah. And I tell people this all the time. When people sign up for your list, do not think that they are just sitting on eggshells waiting to hear from you. Mm -hmm. They still have no idea who you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to use your email to grow your relationship. And that requires time with people. Mm -hmm. And it's more than just once a week. You have to intentionally engage them almost two, three times a week, you know, on average to get them to truly understand who you are. If you're trying to get readers to your blog, utilize your email list. And if you utilize your email list, they'll then become promoters of what's going on on your blog and start to share and get other people on your list. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, very powerful tool. Yeah. 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 So what happens is maybe you put something out on Instagram that you, I, I have a blog post that's the top 10, these tips or whatever. And then they click through from Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest to your blog. And mm -hmm. then right there, they're going to find, Oh, and join my email list. You get this other right. free gift or something like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you have to, it's, it's, it's a chasing its tail is what it is. It is. <laughs> it's going from one thing around and around to the other thing. Yep. And it's content marketing, mm -hmm. which is what is most important. It's not social media marketing. A lot no. of people think, oh, we're using, so no, it's content marketing. It's using content and social media as a vehicle to start the relationship, to get them on your email list, and then using email as the tool to market and sell to them. Now, one question, Kay, how does a designer, when you work with a designer that maybe has no interest in doing e-design and is not capable or interested in being that big time, you know, platform designer where they're doing projects in Texas and projects in Florida, mm -hmm. you know, how does a designer you know, focus their, cause like, like for instance, I'm thinking about that transom uh, blog post that I get. I've had two clients call me within my area that I mm -hmm. could go and sell them window treatments because they were both within 15 or 20 miles of me. But I've had right. eight people call me and ask me questions about it that are from all parts all over the country. Right. So how do you target growing your email list through, you know, like the content that you're putting out in your blog and social media, but how do you geo, you know, make it geocentric? So you're going to have to do, it's going to be a combination of what you're doing online, making sure that if you're using hashtags that you are placing your location in okay. your post, using location driven hashtags. Uh, when you're doing your outreach and you are doing interviews and doing guest blog posts, making sure that th those things are local okay. and, and saying, I am a local designer, Okay. you know, New Jersey, 25 to 50 miles within this zip code. I, I service those people. The people that are going to read you and admire you from a distance will still help you. You still want that type of exposure because mm -hmm. that's social proof. Mm -hmm. So they'll help you close to people that are in, within your vicinity. And there's really no way to block off anybody. Right. But if you're <laughs> blogging and it's SEO, then you do local SEO. Okay. And so again, Ashley did, you know, mention that on the show a couple of weeks ago that you would... He, we, we used an example of if you wrote a blog post in your particular town, maybe is known for mid century you know, you know, sixties, whatever into, you know, uh, design of the architecture of the homes or center hall colonials right. or something like that. Then you could do a whole blog post that like the love of my town. Like I love right. how the center hall colonial, Georgian colonial, one after another, yada, yada, yada. Right. So, okay. Okay. And then you're right. also talking about, um, so we're talking about like in, in the show with Ashley, we talked about how posts like that and then posts where you might feature, if you're an interior designer, you might feature your window treatment person who's right. in your town. And if you're a window treatment person, you might feature your designer, vice versa. Right. So, but we're talking about 
that is not necessarily something that um that's not something that that they're necessarily going to need but it's just something that it is attracting them google wise to your site right okay 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 right yep okay i love it okay very good so in other words if somebody comes and you do this whole blog post on about the tile store in your town somebody might be googling tile you know livingston new jersey then they get Correct. you and they're like Correct. oh she's a designer oh there's a free ebook on the top 10 right. ways to pick tile oh okay right. and now they go into your funnel yep Okay. So it's, and that's the part of it that, that right there is the part of it that is very critical is that intentional part. So you don't Uh just do a blog post on the tile store. You do a blog post on the tile store after you've taken the time to do an ebook on how to pick tile (laughs) so that when they get there, they then can see that. And then that all works in conjunction. Because if you just do the blog post on the tile store and how you have this great relationship and yada, yada, somebody might get there and find you but if your ebook there is on roman shades or on paint right. now they're like well i don't care about it doesn't the make sense okay. right gosh it's a lot it is so to eat to try to simplify it and you know i know we're getting close to the end but to try to simplify it let's kind of look at this so what your email marketing fits into your marketing funnel your online marketing funnel so you've got a marketing funnel, not a sales funnel, but a marketing funnel. You've got top of funnel content, middle of funnel content, bottom of funnel content. Your email marketing is in the bottom of your funnel, okay. but it has to be top of funnel content and middle funnel content that is created <laughs> so that people can get to the bottom of your funnel. Right. So you work backwards. So you know you've got your email down here that you need to use to create sales, but what's going to attract them to your email list is the middle of funnel content, which is like your downloads, your offers. Well, what's going to attract people to my downloads and my offers? It's my top of funnel content. It's my social media posts. It's my blog posts. And then from there, you start the acquisition of new eyeballs to the top of your funnel so that when they go from the top of your funnel, there's an automated process in place that will take them from your blog post to your opt-in to your email series, to your sales. Wow. That's nice. I like Mm it. I like it. It's awesome. It's, I, I, I really, I understand, um, Enough to be dangerous. That's where I'm at. (laughs) Uh, But I will just repeat. I really will repeat this. If you have very little in a pipeline for the next three to four months, there is no reason whatsoever not to at least attempt to do this on your own because you have time. Okay. And if you have very little in your pipeline and you have any sort of budget that you can devote to it and you can work with an expert like Kay, then I also would think that that would be a very worthwhile investment because it's a lot of upfront work, but then the rest of the year, it's just working for you. So, but it is, you know, it's, it's a lot of moving parts and you're just throwing stuff at the wall if you're not doing it, like you said, in the order that it goes into. So right. like I'm at the point where I've got all these emails, but I don't have the things in the other end to back it up. So, you know, the reality is, is that I'm not necessarily in a position to, that I have to grow my email list, but I don't have the content to make my email list happy. You know what I mean? Right. I haven't put the energy into the blog posts and into the various league magnet, magnets in order to say, hey, come here and look at this. It's sort of like, come right. here and I've got nothing to say. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, you have to you have to do it all. And so, um, but I love it, Kay. Is there anything that we left out before I let you go that we need to, but I, you, you, you summed it up there pretty good. I think that's it. I think more than anything, you know, d- for people that are just getting started in this, if you've got one funnel, right. if you can just take the time to create one funnel mm-hmm. and monetize it, it will do wonders for you. It will allow you to generate revenue that will allow you to then pour back into your business where you can hire help to help you create another funnel. <laughs> so okay. That, you know, okay. It's one of those things that if you do it well, you use what the positive results from this one to help you to build on it. So you don't have to create 19 funnels right now. Okay. If, and, 
And when you describe different funnels, you're talking about the different segments of your email list. Right. Okay. I like that. So if you had 20 previous clients and 80 people have just are on your list, you tell me, but I'm thinking I'm starting with 20 previous clients. Right. Right. You, you want to go the people who already clients. know, like, and love you and try and sell right. them something They've else. already paid. Yes, you. yes, 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 <laughs> yes. So I love that, Kay, because I love when we can take big onerous projects that seem like, oh my God, that's too big. I can't even be bothered into a little chunk. And so what we're saying is even 20 people, if you have 20 people that have bought from you over the last one, two, five, six, seven years, whatever it is, if you can develop a very targeted, very triggered sequence of emails that gets them back into your design firm again. And like we said, if you got one client, if one of them pulled the trigger in January, January instead of in June. Hello. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. I-, I like that advice, Kay. You know what? If it's just too big to do it all, like segmenting it out and doing all these different crazy stuff, just start with one. Start with one. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> 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 all righty. Well, you always rock my world when you come here, I have to say. <laughs> So, and well, tell us the website, Kay, if they want more information and if they want to be on your email list so that they get all your goodies. <laughs> <laughs> so I can be found everywhere. It's Kay Whitaker. Uh, the website's kaywhitaker.com. Um, we still have the offer up for the boot camp, Luann, for your listeners oh. to still receive your offer. That that will be up, you know, forever. Oh, okay. So I didn't to- realize that. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Tell us again. Tell us again. So if they want to be, if if you've got a listener that may not have as big a budget to work with me one-on-one, but can take the information and apply it, then the bootcamp is a great place for them. And we're running a 25% discount for the listeners for Luann's show. And all you have to do is go to kwhitaker.com forward slash Luann. The code is there. You click through, go to checkout, apply the discount, and you can be a part of the boot camp. The boot camp right now is going to run live through January, but after that, the content will be there forever and ever. So anybody that signs up at any time, uh, if you do it now, you'll be a part of the boot camp. But if not, you can go in and start at the very beginning and just take it at your own pace. I love it. That's awesome. And it's K is K A E everybody. Okay. Correct. K A E. Right. Awesome. Well, that's awesome. I didn't realize that the little discount thing, and it's not, it's not a little discount at all, (laughs) by the way, (laughs) but I didn't realize that that was um, still in effect. So thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. And so, all righty guys, you know, uh, Kay Whitaker, she knows her stuff. So (laughs) thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for joining me again today for another episode of A Well-Designed Business. This podcast is a production of Window Works in Livingston, New Jersey, your trade resource for custom window treatments and awnings. Learn more about Window Works at www.windowworks-nj.com. All of our music is original music by Room 2 Productions. Please contact us if you want to learn more about original music for your business or your events.